And hello guys, it's me, Animal Introvert, back at it again with another video. This is the fifth, I believe, installment. This is kind of gonna, this is kind of rushed. I, I like didn't prepare at all over the week. But anyway, as you can see, I still got my decor. Of course, this tree got moved. And as always, we're gonna check on the fish. And nope, and nope. None of them are ever in the tubes. As if maybe you could see them around the side. Nope. Not at all. The Marima moss balls are still doing fantastic though. I just filled them up, both of them up earlier today. And anyway, hibernation is coming. As you can see, I have a thermometer in here. This is humidity and this is temperature. As you can see, it ranges from 64 to 67 degrees, and that's over the course of the past 24 hours. And that's kind of, it's been lowering gradually, but anyway, you didn't come here to learn about the temperature of my room. You came here to learn about, well, hibernating your ants. But basically, there's a few principles. One, the ants needs a lot less care. All right, you may still feed them like honey, but don't do any hard foods. Don't do any proteins. Don't do any jellies. Honey or honey water or sugar water would be fine, I believe. Of course, they're still going to need normal water because they need to stay hydrated and they need the humidity or else they'll dry out and die. Now, of course, you're also still going to need to give them good ventilation you can't just shove them in a dark, musty old closet, closet or cupboard and take them back out again in the spring without having checked up on them at all because they, they, they could die. But anyway, as you all can see from my last video when I gave the Myrmica Queen her setup that's like the Ephenogaster, hopefully you guys found the video helpful. I also gave the same setup. Well, I took, I had done the Lacius, who is now back in there, and I caught two new Myrmica Queens who are now in here. But sadly, this Myrmica Queen, I believe, to be dead. Yeah. Trying to get it to focus here. Come on. Keeps on focusing on the bed. There it goes, finally. I know that she looks like, but I know that she looks like she's in a position that a live ant would be in. But no, she hasn't moved from there in a little while. It's kind of sad. It's a little odd. But I mean, that's one of the things that we have to endure as ant keepers, and I kind of really went in depth about that two videos ago. Also, one of... I believe that the two videos ago, I explained to you that one of the Tetramorium queens died, as well as the Pranolepis. You already know that she's dead. But anyway, my ants are already starting to go into hibernation. Basically, when all, if you're in, this video may not be helpful for those of you who live in these, who live near the, in like the tropical zones, like near the equator and whatnot. Because your ants don't hibernate there, they're just out all year round because the temperature is always higher. But if you live in a temperate zone, you're going to see 
your ants hibernating. Like, usually there's one of them, one of these tetramorium out. And these, these tetramorium colony actually has been getting a little bit more active. I think I also expand on that a little bit more in the last video as well. But there's usually like one or two of the ephenogaster out about, but not right now. Then of course, got to check. underneath the books so yes you can see that these three are all doing fine of course they won't get actually eggs these two won't get eggs till next year but as you can see this small tetramorium the queen has died but they don't seem to be affected much by it because they're still living on as well as one of the workers but they were dead before but anyway also Taking a look at the Laceus, you can see that two of the workers have died. They've stockpiled them there. And yes, I had caught another queen. And she is still alive. Luckily. Oh boy. Did not mean to tilt that. Oh, yes, that's right. And I'd also captured another Laetius queen. She was having her nuptial flight when the Myrmica ants were. So it is kind of strange to have seen her out there. But she does seem to be the same genus as the other Laetius. But either way... Hibernating your ants. Maybe a little bit difficult. As, oh my gosh, it never focuses. Never, ever, ever in history. There we go. Just had to get a few pictures. Yeah, I'll go through them later and decide a good thumbnail. Anyway, either way. Oh wow, they're actually accumulating a lot of debt. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they've had, uh, had their graveyard over there. Oh man, she only has two workers now. And what the heck? Oh my gosh. What is that? Oh my gosh. What is it? It's like it's lemonade. Okay, that's gotta be some type of bacteria. Alright, in the comments, you guys, please do look it up and tell me what it is. I'll also look it up. It'll most, almost, and I'll most likely have an answer for you by the time of the next video. And hey, you came out. At least one of you did. Oh, yes, and as you can see, I took the tubes off. Because I do think that that was just kind of wasting space. And it was just kind of precarious, and I didn't want to take the, the unnecessary risks. But as you also can see, my Anubius Nana has another flower. That was the original. This is the new one, as you can tell. And, of course, as always, saving the suicidal snails is our number one concern. Safe and sound. Ooh, another one. Any more? Ooh, sneaky little guy in the back. Any more over on this side? Ooh, didn't even see this one. As you can see, the Christmas moss is booming. 
And Mo was actually sitting right up on the front of the plant this morning when I filled up the tanks. Wonder where she's gone off to. Oh, there she is. She's in the back. You can see her. Sitting right back there. You could see her outlined right there. And she's like perfectly camouflaged. But either way, hibernating your ants is going to be a little bit different. Number one, well, for there's a few distinct differences. Well, for, for one, there's a lot less care required. Of course, you still have to take care of your ants. But a lot less care is required. Well, because they're sleeping. At least semi-sleeping. Alright, you don't need to feed them as much, as I already stated. As pre or rather, as previously, uh, as previously stated. Because, well, yeah, they're asleep. And... Oh, and look at one of the Myrmica. One of the new Myrmica queens is out. Yes, I caught both of them at the same time, and they are connected up. Neither of them have wings at this point, and she seems to be having a little bit of a problem here. Hmm. Well, apparently they both decided to stay in this test tube. Just real quick, gotta... There we go. Close back up again. Yeah, because I do know that some Myrmica species are, um, polygynous. So they can have multiple queens. But either way, still, I didn't want to take the risk because I do that most polygynous queens, you can still only take like two in one test tube because of space. So I just gave them two separate test tubes and I'll see how it goes. And as you can see, the this Tetramorum colony has made a graveyard up here. However, one of their dead is still kind of sitting in there. Well, that's garbage. But either way, I don't know. But anyway, hibernation tips. Let's get this started. All right, um, here we go. Number one, you don't need to feed them as much as previously stated twice. And being previously stated is also previously stated. Because, well, as previously stated once again, they are asleep. And so, but they still require water. And as previously stated, okay, you know what? I'm just going to stop saying as previously stated because it's going to start getting really annoying, I think, both for you and for me. Because as previously stated, you know what? Slap myself in the face. Slap myself in the face again. I'm going to stop now for sure. But anyway, they don't require as much food. You can still feed them sweets, but it's not required. <clears throat> Although I do suggest give them like a little bit of drop of honey. All, but they're still gonna need the water to keep themselves hydrated and to keep themselves from drying out. Because just like you, when you wake up in the middle of the night, I think most of us don't go ahead and just walk downstairs and grab a sandwich out of the pantry or get crackers and out of the fridge. Crackers out of the fridge. Crackers out of out of the cupboard. No. We get up and we get a drink of water. That's why I think most of us have water bottles in our room. 
because we might wake up at night thirsty. Just like these ants, they might wake up and they'll they'll probably be thirsty. I keep on saying thirsty and drink and it's making my my mouth and throat very dry. But either way, I'm sorry. I keep on putting the finger in front of the cameras. Oh, man, I'm gonna have to learn not to do that. But either way, is that a dead fish? Wait a minute. Are you eating a dead fish? Is that fish? I don't think that's a fish. Yeah, I know the golden algae eaters a fish, but... Oh, no, what you're eating is not a fish. No, it's just a bunch of algae that looks like a fish. Oh, man, I was worried right there for a second, man. Oh, gosh, that got me. That got my blood pumping. Either way, next tip. Do not disturb them a lot, unless if you're feeding them or refilling their water. You do not want to disturb them at all while they're hibernating. Or else you could wake them up permanently and they'll start producing eggs again and like being, having normal activity. And you just kind of ruin the cycle. Don't disturb them a lot, unless if it's absolutely necessary. Or it's just a checkup, like a quick little thing. Turning on the lights, opening up the test tube, looking at them. It's just like taking care of a new queen. Yeah, just like it's taking care of a new queen that you just caught. You just kind of put her up at, put her up in a dark place, give her some water, maybe some food. Sweets, of course. Like sugar water, honey water. Or just straight up honey. Make sure it's organic and like just 100% just honey. Because safety reasons. It could kill your ants if there's like unnecessary chemicals in it. That's why I use only these. Uh, that's why I use this. It's it's grade A. Um, it is orange blossom honey. It's made in the USA. And it's just... Honey, look at ingredients. Ingredients, honey. Of course, the infants under one year does not apply to ants because most ants don't live more than one year. And they're not really infants either. Anyway, third tip. You kind of just want to, while leaving them alone, you kind of want to keep them in a dark place. You don't want to expose them to a lot of light. Even when you're not hibernating, you don't want to expose them to a lot of light. Or at least not where they're nesting. That's why I put covers on my test tubes. Or cover them up with books when I don't, when they don't have covers. Like the paper. Yes, this is just black construction paper tape. And it's just pretty simple and easy to make and to use. Of course, you don't want to make it too tight because, like with some of them, I have difficulty actually pulling it, pulling the cover off. Of course, these ants are used to the light, and also they still have a little bit of mold up in there. I'm trying to get rid of by using the light, but oh my gosh, this girl, she's been out of the nest for so long. Oh yeah, of course, right as I say that, she's starting to go back towards the nest. And of course, right as I say that, she's coming back out. Yeah, like, either way, you don't really have to take as much care of them. Most people consider it a break from ant keeping. I do too. It's 
it can put a strain on you. Having to constantly look after your ants. Of course, if you have an ant like Pranolepis, or like I've said, if you live in a tropical zone, your ants, those, I mean, with like Pranolepis in Paris, they will hibernate mostly during the summer instead, although they can be semi-active. And if you're in a tropical zone, your ants won't hibernate because it's warm all year round and they don't need to. Ants hibernate like bears in order to get through the winter. They stock up on food before and water beforehand and they just try, kind of just try and sit tight. But either way, you still want to check up on them every once in a while. You don't want to leave them in the dark for too long. I suggest that you just kind of leave them out in a setup like this for a little while for like the whole year until you see them starting to recede back. I might honestly just keep them up in my room over winter, over this winter, this one, but I may bring them back downstairs in the future. But anyway, guys, please do remember to like, subscribe, turn the notification bell on so that you get notified of my future videos, comment on videos, like especially what kind of what bacteria that is and also share this video with your friends because i'm a starting i'm a beginning youtuber and i need the support of you my viewers you are the sponsors of this channel and if you like what i do please do ev please no not do everything that i have please do show that support by doing whatever i just said But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will almost definitely, well, I'm hoping to see you all in the next one. I'm Letra out.